there is plenty of hype surrounding the Miami Dolphins following their flurry of moves so far in the offseason. Among them, the Dolphins' front office bolstered the offense with the additions of former Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Tyreek Hill and former New Orleans Saints offensive tackle Teron Armstead. After years of featuring under now former head coach Sean Payton's innovative offense in New Orleans, Armstead now joins an offensive unit in Miami that features multiple speedy talents across the board. Armstead knows exactly just how crucial it can be for an offense to bolster players who can be a threat in the open field, as was the case during his days in blocking for the likes of Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas while with the Saints. Now in Miami, Armstead sees much potential for the Dolphins' offense because of this vital factor. I think we're building something, Armstead said on Thursday. We're building something special. Him, Tyreek Hill, paired with Jalen Waddell, and that speed, and then the speed of us up front on the offensive line, we're going to try to turn these Sundays into a track meet. A physical track meet, let's not try to overshadow that at all. Up front we're going to implement that physicality, that mentality. Speed kills when you try to catch these guys on the outside. The Dolphins are just coming off of a roller coaster campaign where they racked up a seven-game winning streak and finished regular season play with a 9-8 record. With the multiple key additions on the offensive side of the ball, Armstead is aiming high for his upcoming run in Miami. Every team at this point feels like they are Super Bowl contenders, Armstead said. All 32. It's not true. We can talk about what it looks like on paper, you've got to go out there and do it, put the work in and practice, then you really get a chance to know. Right now, I can't really, I think it's unfair to say. I'm going to say we'll be Super Bowl champions but you go, ask and anybody else is going to say the same thing. It sure is setting up to be a hectic AFC East title race this season. After the big moves involving Teron Armstead and Tyreek Hill, the Miami Dolphins stood at 20 moves made in the first six official days of free agency. That included re-signing eight of their own free agents, including tight end Mike Jasicki after they placed the franchise tag on him, as well as adding 10 undrafted free agents from other teams and placing a second-round tender on restricted free agent Nick Needham, which all but guaranteed he'd be back with the team in 2022. While a final assessment of each move won't be fully clear until the 2022 season plays out, we certainly can offer our initial ranking of the 19 moves. 1. Signing left tackle Teron Armstead. This actually was a very close because adding the fastest wide receiver Tyreek Hill obviously was a big deal, but because the offensive line is a factor on every single play and because Armstead has the ability to raise the level of the whole group because of his experience and leadership, we give it the top spot. 2. Trading for wide receiver Tyreek Hill. The addition of Hill, which was reasonable in terms of pick compensation but expensive in terms of the new contract the Dolphins gave him, just creates all sorts of possibilities for the offense, not only because of his big play ability but because opposing defenses will have to account for him every time he's on the field. 3. Re-signing defensive Emmanuel Ogba. We said this from the start, that probably nothing the Dolphins could do in free agency would be more important than keeping the versatile edge defender, who we'll say again has been the Dolphins' second-best defensive player behind Xavier Howard. 4. Signing quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. Even though we found out odd that Bridgewater would not reveal his expected role during his Zoom media session Monday, we certainly believe he was brought in as the clear backup to Tua Tungavailoa and in that vein he represents a clear upgrade over Jacoby Brissett. 5. Signing running back Chase Edmonds. A shifty running back with pass-catching ability is a perfect fit for the offense that Mike McDaniel will be bringing to the Dolphins, and Edmonds should be effective as part of a rotation in the backfield. 6. Re-signing tight end Mike Jasicki. The big question right upon the hiring of McDaniel as head coach was how well the pass-catching Jasicki would fit in an offense that asks its tight ends to block. However this works out, there's no question that Jasicki brings a major element to the passing game with his size and receiving ability. 7. Extending a second-round tender on restricted free agent Nick Needham This was a good and necessary move for a valuable cornerback who's become a solid NFL player after three seasons. 8. Signing fullback Alec Ingold. It was a guarantee, or just about, that the Dolphins would add a fullback in free agency given McDaniel's background, yes, even after the addition of John Lovett to a reserve, future contract, and the Dolphins got a very good one in Ingold, who brings not only blocking ability but pass-catching skills as well. 9. Re-signing tight end Durham Smythe. Because of his blocking ability, it always figured the Dolphins would bring back Smythe, who has developed into a reliable receiver since entering the NFL even if he's not a down-the-field threat. 10. Signing guard Connor Williams. The Dolphins' offensive line has attracted a lot of attention over the past few years, 
and we've maintained it all along that the most important factor for its improvement in 2022 will be improvement from its young players. That said, adding a veteran like Williams, who has done some good work but is coming off a subpar season, was a move in the right direction. 11. Signing running back Raheem Mostert. There's risk involved with this signing because of Mostert's knee history, but the Dolphins didn't give him a huge contract and the potential reward is big because if Mostert can regain his form, he should make a very good tandem with Edmonds. 12. Re-signing linebacker Alandon Roberts. The Dolphins obviously like what Roberts brings, both in terms of physicality and leadership, to have re-signed him to a one-year contract for a third consecutive season. 13. Signing cornerback Keon Crossan. The Dolphins have not been shy in recent years about giving multi-year contracts to special teams players, which is what they did with the speedy Crossan. 14. Signing wide receiver Cedric Wilson. This is an ascending player coming off a breakout season for the Dallas Cowboys, and the only issue one could have with this move was the salary involved, $12.7 million of fully guaranteed money, per over the cap, for a player with a limited resume. 15. Re-signing wide receiver Preston Williams The Dolphins bringing back Williams after they failed to extend him a qualifying offer as a restricted free agent actually has to qualify as a bit of a surprise. The hope is he can go back to the earlier version of Williams, who showed flashes in 2019 and 2020 before a forgettable 2021 season. 16. Re-signing linebacker Duke Riley. This was part of series of moves that saw the Dolphins re-sign depth linebackers who made major contributions on special teams. 17. Re-signing linebacker Sam Egavoen. Egavoen fits in the same mold as Riley and Brennan Scarlett as backup linebackers with special teams ability brought back on a one-year contract. 18. Re-signing linebacker Brennan Scarlett. See Sam Egavoen and Duke Riley. 19. Signing wide receiver Trent Sherfield. This was a depth signing, with the idea that Sherfield maybe could carve a role as a backup wide receiver while contributing on special teams. 20. Re-signing safety Sheldrick Redwine. Redwine is a young player with special teams experience, though he'll have to fight to make the 53-man roster.